Today we're going to take a look at YouTube, captioning on a dime or less. Um, for some of you, um, I recognize your names and um, it's nice to see people that I know in the classroom and there are other people that I do not know. So for those that do not know me, um, the only real sort of important thing to know is that I'm an assistive technology advocate. Um, and that experience has included uh, a certification from CSUN in their assistive technology applications program. Most recently, I worked for a year on a Ca um, California Emerging Technology Fund project, which was looking at broadband access and adoption for underserved communities in California. I did that as a consultant for the Center for Accessible Technology in Berkeley. Prior to that time, I was the manager of the AT network and that's how I know many of you and I'm very familiar with your work in uh, many of the ILCs throughout the state of California. Before that, I did a project, I worked with the project for almost 10 years with the Frank D. Latterman Regional Center here in Los Angeles and that was providing um, assessment and basic introduction to technology to individuals with developmental disabilities. Um, before that, not professionally, but as sort of a community activist and family member, I served on the board of the Computer Access Center um, in West Los Angeles. And probably the most actually sort of important thing um, in terms of at least my experience in this field is that it comes from my experience as a parent. I have a daughter who's now 28 years old. She has cerebral palsy and as it turns out for, for my daughter, technology really was the significant um, opportunity that, that created other opportunities in her life. And I had to learn many of the things that I do today simply by trying to provide that access for her. Um, about maybe 12, 15 years ago, I changed careers and now I do this professionally. So that's a little bit of background in terms of who I am. Now, what do I know about captioning? Actually, from a technical a policy or a compliance point of view, I know very little. Uh, I'm not a techie person. I'm not a public policy person. Um, most of my experience with accessibility um, has come in the context of working with limited resources and budgets, whether that's with a nonprofit organization or a school district. I'm very familiar with the, um, the environment that, that many of you work in, and that is that you, you're trying to provide a full range of services and you're typically working within limited resources. And so that's kind of probably where a lot of my thinking and experience with captioning comes from. Um, and the quote, necessity is the mother of invention, certainly applies here. Um, when I started to use videos online to promote public awareness or promote a particular organization, it became clear to me that certainly captioning was going to be a factor that had to be thought through and since there was not perhaps a budget for an outside professional captioning service, um, I tend to think, well, I'm not the only one in this situation. There has to be other people that have gone down this road, certainly before I have. And then that usually starts my learning curve where, where I start doing some research to sort of find out what tools are available. Uh, knowing that there are typically high-end commercial programs that one can get at a fairly, you know, high price, um, sometimes, you know, over $300 plus. And then there's usually typically somebody out there doing open source work or making programs available at no cost in maybe a beta format. Um, and so that's usually where I look. I look to try to figure out where is there a value and how I'm, might I be able to use it where it's maybe not as, as, as complete as if I was going with a professional captioning service, but it does in fact maybe provide at least a standard of accessibility in terms of captioning. Um, so most of what I'm going to share with you today is based on that experience. Uh, and so before I get into this presentation this morning, I do want to make one um, mention with regards to professional captioning services. Um, if your organization is using a professional captioning service, um, there's certainly 
well worth whatever they charge if they're a good company. And they provide a range of services that I'm not pretending to touch on here. So today's presentation is really trying to figure out how to do this down and dirty if in fact you're in a situation where you cannot afford a professional captioning service. Okay? Okay, who might be interested in what I have to share today? Um, certainly any organization or agency that utilizes online videos as part of its community outreach, its services, and its public awareness. And um, I think that more and more, you know, if you're a nonprofit organization and you have an online presence, there's a very strong likelihood that you're either currently using videos or that you're linking to YouTube videos that are integrated into your site. And so this is kind of almost, you know, social media is, if you're not doing social media, you're probably not as successful in your mission as you could be. And so this is a this this idea of online communication, online videos in an accessible format is something that we all really need to pay careful attention to. Um, who else might be interested? Anyone or any organization that's committed to accessibility and finds themselves working within a limited budget. Um, it's not unusual for a nonprofit organization to maybe get a grant to do some of the work. Um, and for one reason or another, when the preliminary budget might have been submitted, there wasn't enough, perhaps, forethought to think about the line item for captioning services. And so all of a sudden, you're in a situation where you're working off of a grant. It includes generating some level of video and you find yourself that you have you have no budget for captioning and you're sort of going, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Where do we have to cut the corners? So there might be something helpful for you today in this. And then three, any one or any organization that benefits from using and sharing available free software that promotes universal, universal access and certainly captioning is part of that picture. Okay. I have a couple of questions that I wanted to poll you so that I have a better idea of who's in the audience. So what I'm going to do is I've got, uh, I think, about five questions. And I'm going to sort of go through this. Hopefully, it'll be relatively quickly. Um, as Rosemary pointed out, you'll want to use your, your yes or no checker X mark in terms of the questions. And so the first question is going to be, how many of you currently have a YouTube account and upload YouTube videos. And that's as an individual or as an organization. OK, so I'm seeing that uh, we've got a pretty good cross section. Um, there are people that certainly uh, are indicating that they have YouTube accounts which are obviously very easy to open. It doesn't cost anything to have a YouTube account. And there are some people that are not familiar with um, or maybe they do not have an account. Um, that's not rocket science. Um, at some point, if you're interested in online videos, to be able to have a YouTube account essentially allows you to upload a video. And that would be a prerequisite in terms of being able to have access to what I'll show you further on down the line. So OK, that's good. Good to know. Uh, the next question, how many of you use YouTube closed captioning features? So this doesn't require you to be somebody that has an account, but how many of you actually use those caption features that YouTube has? Some of you may not be familiar with them. Some of you may be using them. OK, so we have a couple of people that have used those features. And it looks as though perhaps a majority of people um, have little or no experience in terms of the captioning features. So this will be very helpful for you to sort of see what's out there and where the added value is. OK, the next question, how many organizations currently use online videos to inform, provide services, or promote your organization's mission? So if you're working with an organization, how many of your organizations currently use videos online? OK, so this is, this is maybe a good timely training then for some of you people. Uh, I see that we've got a, a handful of people that, in fact, are already using videos to promote their mission. 
Um, and of those organizations, how many of your organizations currently use outside professional captioning services? I'm just curious as to who's out there that's already doing this in such a way that they've got a line item budget and they're working with outside providers. Okay. So there are a couple, a few people there. Okay. And then my last question is how many of you have tried captioning software programs, whether that's a commercial program that you spend 300 bucks plus or a, an open source? Okay, great. Okay. Well, then most of you are where I started from when I had to start beginning to do this. So for the next 50 minutes or so, I'm going to start by having just a brief word about closed and open, caption, open captioning. I'm going to review the standard YouTube captioning features that are there right now, whether or not you're a member or have an account with YouTube is not important. Anyone that's looking at a YouTube video can access those features and I'll walk you through those. And then the last part of the training today will be to learn how to create and upload a synchronized caption transcript file for YouTube videos. So keep in mind this is pretty specific to YouTube. Um, there are applications that you could use and I'll sort of mention that as I go along, but most of it's pretty specific to YouTube. Okay, captioning, just a little bit of definition here. Captions synchronized with the video image so that viewers have equivalent access to the content that is originally presented in sound as well as any additional or interpretive information. So a caption clearly will cover the dialogue that might be taking place in a video, but it will also include, depending upon how sophisticated you get, um, audio description, um, it might describe a scene, uh, it might describe uh, an important emotional reaction, um, and so that's what they're referring to when they talk about interpretive information. Now this is basic stuff in terms of the difference between opening captioning and closed captioning, but some of you may not be completely familiar with this, so I'll just real briefly go over this. Open captioning sometimes called burned in or hard -cored, are, are hard coded captions are always in view and cannot be turned off by the viewer. So basically if you have, sort of get a little box here, if you have your open caption, you're going to see on the screen there that I just circled a caption frame that's essentially burned into the video. Now it's technically not burned into it because it's all digitized, but it's there. It, once it's on the video, you cannot turn it off. And there are, in fact, some good reasons for thinking about open captioning. Um, and I'll talk about those in a second, but I want to talk about closed captioning first because that's what we're going to be looking at today. Closed captioning indicates that not all viewers see the captions only those who choose to activate them. Closed captioning requires a decoding device to view captions. And so actually, for many of you who have enjoyed YouTube videos, you may not have even realized that there is a closed captioning feature available to you uh, because when you open up a YouTube video, the default is going to have closed captioning turned off. And if you can see on the screen, the difference here where you see that, 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 that caption is that I have on that YouTube video engaged it and you can see the logo, the CC will always tell you that that means closed captioning. Now it seems to me from a personal perspective that closed captioning is a nice feature because it provides the user with the choice as to whether or not they want to take advantage and have captioning on or captioning off. And that might be, in fact, an added advantage as opposed to an open captioning where you're actually going ahead and creating a video that once it has those captions on, you cannot remove them. Now, if you can think about 
a situation where open captioning might even be a preference, let's, I'll just give you a, a for example. Let's say that you are working with an organization and you've created uh, a video that promotes your organization, its mission, and its location, or how to get in contact with you or whatever. And you want to share that with a local community organization that might even want to go ahead and put it on their website. Well, once you give that video to another party, you really can't control whether or not they're going to use it in the context where captioning is part of that access question. And if you're going to loan out a video or give a video to another organization or another individual that may not be perhaps viewing this on YouTube, by doing it as an open caption, you'll always at least have some security knowing that whatever you've passed along is something that has captions and makes it more accessible for a viewer that would benefit from caption. I hope I didn't over talk that point, but I just wanted you to understand the difference between open and closed captioning. With YouTube, we are talking about closed captioning, and so that's what we're going to be talking about in the rest of the training today. Any questions on any of that? Rosemary, you let me know if I need to stop and take someone's question so far. Okay, let's take a look at YouTube closed captioning. What you'll need, number one, you need an open attitude towards technology. And what I mean by that basically is I am not a techie, and I think that actually helps me in my work because I don't assume that other people are techies. Um, but there are situations, I mean, if you wanted to divide the world, there are, there, are people, there are some people who don't want to engage in technology. They might want the benefit of technology, but they don't want to engage in it. And then there are other people who actually find technology to be interesting and, and, and always changing, and that kind of stimulates them. If you're negative about technology, then the information that I'm sharing with you today won't be important to you directly. You might, if you're an administrator or working in mid-management, it might be helpful to pass along to somebody that does have an open attitude towards technology. But you, do, you don't have to be a techie, but you do actually have to have an open attitude. Uh, you would need a YouTube account, and that's very simple to do. All you have to do is go online to YouTube and you know, sign up. You need some software, and I'll walk you through which software pieces that I'm using here. And, and there's, there, there are no costs, so there's no fee attached to it. And last, you have to have a patience for climbing a minimal software learning curve. And on the slide that you see on the screen, I have included a photo that has a gentleman that's climbing a very tall pole. Um, I'm sort of making a joke there. Um, it's not that steep a learning curve. But you do have to kind of futz with this stuff a little bit. And particularly when you're, bo you're using software that's either low cost or no cost, you know, you, you might have to, it might not be as intuitive as a commercial program. And so you might have to go ahead and understand that up front, when you're learning this, it might go a little bit slower. But then later on, it, goes, it picks up and, it, and it's not as much of a problem. OK? Um, let me just review um, what I'm going to show you. Um, and the YouTube captioning features that we'll be looking at, um, YouTube offers captioning services for uploaded videos. So any video that you would upload, you're able to engage the captioning feature. Um, that feature provides a moderate control. I won't go ahead and say it's as much as I would like, but a moderate control over the font, the font size, the color of the captions, both the foreground and the background. And I'll walk you through that. And then it also has a very interesting feature that for those of you who perhaps have already played around with YouTube's captioning features, it has a beta automatic caption feature that transcribes the audio without the need for a captioning file. Automatic captioning is often inaccurate on videos with background music and accented or impaired speech. And I'll show you an example of that as well. So this beta feature that comes with YouTube, it's sort of 
like not quite ready for prime time. Uh, but it'll get there. Um, they basically are relying on the speech engines um, that Google has developed. And the speech recognition is pretty good. But I think for the work that we do and the people that we serve, um, you want to have a standard when you're thinking about captioning. And in terms of at least my preference, the beta automatic caption feature doesn't quite rise to that standard. Um, but I do think that it'll be probably a short period of time where you might not even have to think about creating a captioning file, which is what we're going to do today. And then last, um, in terms of the upload feature for, for caption tracks, um, it, it provides access to a variety of different formats, which will be a little bit more clear as we go through this today. But the different format that YouTube will accept in terms of their file formats would be subviewer, subrip, and something called SBV. I'm not really even quite sure what that refers to. But it'll make more sense as we go through this. OK. So if we're using YouTube and we're viewing a YouTube video, uh, the standard features um, includes what you see on their screen right now basically this you know, player that you would use when you're sort of viewing a video um, has a decoder built into it. And that's really what's going to allow us to turn on and turn off the closed captioning features. And in the lower right-hand corner of the player, it's not completely clear here on this screen, but if you're looking at it on your monitor, you would see it. There's a CC, obviously abbreviation for closed captioning. And it's right there on the player. And if you were to click on that, you can see just now as I did with the screen, it changes. And so you actually now see that that CC in your player turns red. And there are captions that are now available on your screen. And here's a bigger picture of that. So that's really quite wonderful. It's, it, in terms of the user, it really doesn't really require anything more than simply knowing that that feature exists. And if you're working with your community members, that might be part of what you want to include on your website if you actually have a, a, a video that you're going to display. You might actually have a line of copy somewhere that says closed captioning available and some description as to how to do that. But if I was to clip, click on that CC one more time, what I would wind up getting is a pop-up menu. I hope you can all see that. And with the pop-up menu, it has a series of menu items. At the top it says settings. And then there's translate or transcribe captions, beta. And then there's an English if you wanted to indicate which language you're going to be using. And then there's the last feature is to be able to turn off the CC, the closed captioning. Now let's take a look at the settings. So if I click on that settings, what will happen is I will get yet another pop-up menu. And these are all, um, in terms of today's presentation, on the screen in a screen capture format. So what we're looking at is a screen capture of that pop-up menu. And what you can see here is basically um, sections for those captioning settings that allows for fonts, allows for the um, size of the font. Over in, over in this section here, you can click on a plus or a minus, and it will increase the size of your font. And then you're able to go ahead and alter or adjust the foreground and the background. And so what I have on the screen right now is basically um, a yellow with a black background, a black sort of shadow. And you can play around with those. And so what I like about this is that YouTube has included this feature that allows you to go ahead and make adjustments based on your own preferences. Now, at the beginning here, when I said that they had moderate controls on this, um, I would like to see if I could raise the 
caption size a little bit larger than what they allow for. And there's a couple of other things, but, but I don't want to, you know, pick on them too much. Okay, so those are the basic features that allow you to go ahead and include uh, the size and the format of what you're going to be looking at in terms of the captions. Now I mentioned the transcribe auto beta feature, which allows you to go ahead and um, you know automatically uh, turn on or, or, or view a video and actually turn on this beta feature, and I'll just go ahead and move to my next slide here. So if I clicked on the CC in the lower right hand corner and I went to that second option, the transcribe, let's see here, oh, let me go ahead and do this, there we go, this second option there, the transcribe captions beta, what you would sort of see here is, and let's just imagine that I, don't, I have a video without any caption file attached to it, which is what I'm going to show you later. But in this case, right now, we're going to be looking at a YouTube video that somebody posted that has no captioning file to it whatsoever. If I clicked, or clicked on that transcribe um, option, it kind of tells me here, it says, Transcribe Audio is an experimental service that uses Google's speech recognition technology to provide autom automated captions for video. Okay, so I think the operative word there is experimental. I mean, I think that's their disclaimer. And if you go ahead and take a look on this next slide, here is a transcription sample of a video that I was working on. And the video automatic transcription reads, Sudan says the walk into a brain cells of reasons shows how she does that. I can't hear you laughing, but I hope some of you are laughing. And the reality of what that should have said was to access the lock and open it. So Zabrita is going to show us how she does that. So this actually, the sample I'm showing you right now, is actually off of the caption track that I'm going to walk you through now. I wanted to show you that so that you see the difference between that beta feature and what we're going to be providing. As far as I'm concerned, if I was to go ahead and upload a YouTube video, and I was going to rely on my viewer to use the transcribed feature, and not go ahead and create a caption transcript. I'm basically, you know, assuming that it's not going to be a very pleasant experience for the end user, and it might actually even create, you know, misinformation. So that doesn't meet my standard. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to create a closed caption transcript file. Before I jump into this section. Rosemary, is there any questions that people might have before I kind of go into how to create this caption file? Anyone? Okay. Well, I'm going to assume then that this is all clear and things are going well. Okay. So to create a closed caption transcript file, the first thing you're going to need to do is upload a video onto your YouTube. So you've got your video. It might be in a number of different formats. Maybe it's a, you know, maybe you created it on a PC or maybe it's a QuickTime from Apple. Um, you might have a video in a different format. You're going to upload it to YouTube. Um, you're going to also want to, before you create a closed caption transcript file, you'll need to convert your video into what's known as an AVI format. And if you're not a technical person, don't be scared by that because I'm not a technical person. It's just a format that typically you can convert a video, any video over if you're using a video converter program. And I'll tell you a little bit about that later as well. But pretty simple. You just take your maybe your, your um, Windows Media Player video 
and you open it up and you convert it to an AVI format. It's the same video, it's just a different format. I think for a lot of the editing programs, it's, it's an easier standard so that you're not doing the Apple PC kind of problem thing. So once that's into an AVI format, you're going to use it with a software program called Subtitle Workshop. And what we're going to use that program for is to actually create this transcript file. And then we're going to upload that transcript file so that it's basically linked with the YouTube video. It's actually not complicated, simpler even when you take a look at what we're going to show you now. Okay. Let's just talk about the software a little bit before we get into the, you know, the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, to create a transcript file for captions, you're going to want to go ahead and create a file that is in a compatible format for YouTube to understand. And the three formats that YouTube recommends is this subviewer, a subrip, or this SBV. Um, you may also, as I just mentioned, may need a software program that would allow you to convert your video to an AVI format. And then you'll also want to download a program called Subtitle Workshop 4.0. It's actually in a beta format. It's currently a free download and is software that you use to create your caption track. Now, the easiest way to find this is, and I actually had a URL that I could have put on the screen, but it was such a long URL that, you know, it's impossible to sort of remember or, or put down. So the easiest way to actually find Subtitle Workshop 4.0 is just to Google it. You'll get to a site and there'll be a mirror um, place that you can go ahead and, and download that. It's a pretty basic program. The video converter is the same kind of deal if you needed to get a video converter so that you could transform your, your, you can convert your video to an AVI format. Just go ahead and go to Google and put in video converters. Uh, on the screen right now, um, I, I tend to like to use CNET. It's a fairly, you know, um, high-end kind of site for reviews and places to get downloads. I kind of trust them. And, I'm not going to run into any real big problems with them, so I sort of go to see, see that. Okay, I see a question. Okay, there's somebody's got it. Somebody just went ahead and did that. That's great. Thank you, David. David Stark in the chat window has gone ahead and put in the uh, URL, so that's great. Um, and let's just go ahead and. Uh, okay, I jumped ahead. Let's see. I don't know how I got jumped ahead here. Sorry about that. Um, so David has just put up on the screen the link that you can go ahead and find uh, Subtitle Workshop. Um, nothing real complicated about it. Uh, Subtitle Workshop supports multiple subtitle formats and has many features for a subtitle editing program. Um, the product promotion copy, I'll read it, um, and it sounds like most product promotion copy, but it says Subtitle Workshop makes subtitle creating, editing, converting tasks almost a pleasure. And I think the operative word there is almost. Um, the amicable and intuitive interface mixes easy to access menus and must have features with advanced functions and a remarkable speed and stability drastically reducing subtitle editing time. Um, that's really quite a good copywriter. Um, I don't know that it's a particularly intuitive software. It's free, so I sort of, whenever I get something free, I sort of I cut it a little bit of slack in terms of how, how clear and easy it is to use. Um, I, I find Subtitle Workshop to be okay, but it does have a bit of a learning curve. You can see on the screen right now um, a screenshot of site Subtitle Workshop. And what you have basically here is a work area. And you'll see how I do this when I go ahead and do desktop sharing. Um, but this is where your video is going to be. Actually, you'll be able to see your video there. And then down below is where you'll be actually typing in 
your captions so that it's synchronized with your video. Okay? And this is sort of what it looks like on the screen right now. You'll see a screen capture of what I was just demonstrating here. There's your video. And down below is where I'm entering my captions. Now, when I was reading that promotion copy and kind of teasing uh, a little bit about that, um, the, 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 the way that this all sort of works, um, for me at least to learn, everybody has a different learning style. For me, I had to do a lot of hunting and pecking. Things didn't quite make sense. Um, but I figured it out. Um, and once you figure it out, then once you start doing these captionings, the time, in, you know, your, your, your performance time is reduced significantly once you know how to do it. Um, when I said minimal learning curve, this is where you're going to need to spend a little bit of time is just to sort of, you know, put some time aside and then if, once you've downloaded the program, play with it a little bit. Uh, it might be clunky at first, but once you get through that, it's, it's fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of desktop sharing now. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you see my desktop, and I'm going to go ahead and open up Subtitle Workshop and show you how simple it is. So bear with me here. I hope that we can get through this. I did this last night and my system crashed, so let's hope it doesn't crash today. And if you have a question, this would be a good time either to ask or to type it in there. Let's go. Okay, um, I'll need your feedback on this either from Rosemary or somebody else. But right now on your screen, you should see Subtitle Workshop 4. Does everybody see that? Okay, good. Okay, great. Okay, so this would basically be Subtitle Workshop when I open it up. Nothing's there. What I want to do is I'm going to go up to my top menu here, and I'm going to go to Video. And I'm going to actually open up the video that I want to go ahead and subtitle. So let me go to that. And here what I'm doing on my um, the Open Movie dialog box is I'm going to look for my AVI file. And this is why I needed that video converter because it's not going to go ahead and open up a format other than AVI in this program. So I'll open that up. And you might have heard the very beginning of it. I turned it off. But this is the very opening frame for a short video for a series that I've been working on called Zebrita Makes It Work. And now that I have that in there, if I go ahead and let that go, okay, so I'm at this stage right now in my video where I've come on as the narrator and I've said, here we are with Zebrita Makes It Work. So that's going to want to be my first caption that I put in there. So to do that, I get to that place where I want to insert the caption. I might even back it up a little bit so I get right on when I, my voice starts. OK, so okay, so this is where I want to put that, that caption in. And if I go over to, and these are my controls here down below. If I go over to one of these icons, that is, I know, an icon that represents putting in an, uh, a time marker. I'm going to use that once I insert a subtitle. So I'm going to go up to Edit. Oh, hold on. OK, I'm going to do New Subtitle. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this icon, which will actually put in the time marking for when that is to start. And then I click on the window at the very bottom, and I say, here we are with Zebrita makes it work. So I've typed that in, and I want to go ahead and figure out now where I want that subtitle to end. So I'm going to play. So I'm going to go back. I want to go ahead and get exactly. 
Okay, so there I'm going to put in there with Sabrina Dunham. Okay, maybe that's all I want. You know, you get a feel for how many characters that you want on one particular caption. So here I am. It says, here we are with Zabrita makes it work with Zabrita Dunham. And I know that that's where I want to end it. So I'm going to go back up to my little controls. I'm going to find the icon that closes that. And now if I went back to the beginning of this and played it, and I hope that you can kind of hear and see it. I know I don't know how the streaming will work on your machine, but I'll do that. So you see there the video comes in and now it is synced with that line. Now as it turns out with this particular video, I went ahead and I'll load the file that I used. And so now on this screen, what you should see are my first five captions. And down in that middle section, you'll see one, two, three, four, and five. And if I wanted to, I could sort of go to the different sections. And that's pretty much as simple as it gets. Now, if you go through this and you're going to be doing maybe a video of, say, five minutes. Um, okay, I've got a, I got a message here on the screen. Lisa, Marty, are you only hearing audio of your video in the subtitle workshop? Are you only hearing audio of your video in the subtitle workshop program? Yeah, I don't know how the video is working in terms of if you couldn't hear that. Um, by any chance, Lisa, um, I am hearing the video. So when the video is playing, I'm actually getting. Let's see, Lisa, I don't. I just don't see the video. Only subtitle. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if that's the case and you're not seeing the video, um, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, what I would be looking at, and maybe it's just the way that the desktop sharing feature will illuminate in this particular case isn't showing the video. But yes, I do see a video there. And um, if you see the caption, um, that, that video window where you're not seeing the video, but where I am seeing the video, I see the video and I see the captioning. It makes sense? OK. Sorry that you're not seeing the video. Um, but that's pretty much as simple as it is. I wanted to show you that in terms of desktop sharing just so that you know that it's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's pretty simple. Um, on a five minute video, once I get through this learning curve, it's kind of one of those deals where if you use it, you'll, you'll you know, if you do it on a regular basis, you got it and you, you get faster and faster. If you don't use it on a regular basis, you always have to kind of reclimb that learning curve at the very beginning. But it, it gets pretty simple going through there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the presentation. Let me see if I can, there we go. Uh, okay, all right, great. Okay. On that particular part, oh, okay, well, before I do that, on that particular section that I was using with the de desktop sharing, um, okay, Lisa just asked, how long might it take to do a five-minute video? That's a good question. And I would say that I'm now at a clip right now that if I'm doing a five-minute video and maybe it's got a fair amount of you know, dialogue in it, it could take me an hour. If I, if I do it within an hour, I feel like I'm doing pretty fast. Um, and that means, you know, making sure that you've, you've checked your spelling and that, you know, it's just the way you want it, et cetera. Uh, Cecilia, do you recommend self-captioning or using the beta Google speed recognition software as a base and editing from that? Um, Cecilia, I don't know if once I use the beta Google speech recognition software, whether I then have access to that transcript to edit it. I thought about this question just the other day and I thought, wow, maybe they could get you halfway there and then you can just go in and clean up. Um, that's something that you might try. I hate cleaning up, especially if it's arbitrary and there's no way of really predicting where the mistakes are going to be because then you have to almost spend as much time 
making sure you identify where the mistakes are, that to me it's almost quicker to start off by just simply going ahead and, and running with it. All right, let me go ahead. I can see that I got 11.25. I'm going to move forward. Um, at the end of that, you have to save your caption transcript to this SRT format. That's what I was telling you about. So I just simply go to, and on the screen capture right now, you see a dialog. And I just find they have many, many different filters. Um, I just go to the sub rip. That's the one that I use, the SRT format. And then once I'm done with that, what it does, and now on, you, on the screen, what you can see essentially is basically what that transcript looks like. Um, and it's just really simply a, a text file that's got time markers on it that YouTube will be able to read. Then what I do is now from my YouTube account, I've already gone ahead, and I've been in Subtitle Workshop, I created that captioning file, I'm out of that Subtitle Workshop, I'm not going to use that again. I now open up my YouTube account and I select the video that I want to select from. And when you do that, you're going to basically have a window that looks something like what you see on the screen now. And on the tabs on that screen, you'll see something that says Edit Subtitles Captions. And if I click on that, I'm going to now wind up having a screen. And there's a screenshot captured there. And you'll see here in this section, that I can upload a caption track. And so what I'm going to do is click down here where it says Add New Caption or Transcript. And now you'll see the screen capture. What happens is I've gone ahead and I've, on my browser thing, I've gone ahead and I've located the SRT file on my local hard drive. And then I just simply go ahead and upload it. And it takes like maybe two seconds. And voila, closed captioning on less than a dime. That will be all there. And you can sort of just walk through that. Um, and that's about as simple as it is. It's really quite wonderful to sort of know, one, the closed captioning features that are included with the YouTube player. There are other players that will do this so that if you had your own website and you were for what you know you had decided that you weren't going to use YouTube, but you did want to go ahead and you know um, display videos on your website using a different player. There are some players out there that do have the decoding, so it doesn't have to exclusively be YouTube. But a lot of people are using YouTube. It's kind of the the, the most you know obviously ubiquitous. It's every, everybody's using it, um, and it's that simple. Um, and that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to share with you today. Cecilia, do you recommend self-captioning? OK, that we just went through. The, let's see. Do you recommend self-captioning? Are you OK, we did that. Any other questions? Because that's pretty much um, what I had to share with you today. On the screen right now, you'll see if you have any questions, there's my contact information. Uh, Jerry's asking, can anyone change ad captions to your video? Or would they have to access to your own account? Yes, Jerry, um, no one would be able to change that transcript file without having access to your account. I hope I was, I hope I was fairly clear in what I shared with you today. If it seems a little bit too much information, um, then I just made it that way. It's, it's not as, as, as complicated um, as you might think. Um, the, 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 the biggest issue there would be to you know, spend a little bit of time on subtitle workshop um, to sort of get familiar with its controls. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, OK, let's see. Uh, what software would I use to add as an ASL captioner? Um, boy, that's a good question. Because uh, you're talking about real-time captioning now, Cecile. If you're talking about real-time captioning, that is a little bit different. And that is, I think, at least that's over my head in terms of that I would probably be going to a professional captioner for something like that. Uh, you'd, have to be, you'd have to have transcriber skills to, think, to, to do it in real time. 
Maria, I'm glad that it was helpful for you. I do think that it's something that we should know about. And if you're not going to use it directly, maybe somebody on staff. My particular feeling about this in terms of organizations, this is something that would be great to do for a volunteer. If someone came to you and said, I want a volunteer, but they were the kind of volunteer where they really want a very defined task, this would be something that they could do at an organization or even at home, and it could be very, very beneficial to the organization. So it's a volunteer activity that you could think of too and all of a sudden make things that were not captioned before captioned. How do we get the webinar transcript? Uh, I'll let Rosemarie talk to you about that. Um, other than that, it's great to see everyone. Um, I'm thrilled that uh, you all showed up today. I hope this was worth your time. I, I am very sensitive to how valuable your time is, and I appreciate that, uh, um, and hopefully that you got something out of this. Okay, Rosemarie, it's all yours. Great. Thank you so much, Marty. Uh, that was a really uh, great presentation. Um, wow. Um, sure was spent a lot of time for um, learning this uh, subtitle workshop software. Uh, to answer the question about the webinar transcript, um, I will send out an announcement uh, within a week or so um, to provide you the PowerPoint presentation as well as the archive link along with the transcript. Uh, I will have to forward this um, recorded link to our captioner so that she can do, um, you know, do the captions afterwards. So I'll send out the announcement. And for those of you that are not on the AT Network listserv, would you like a copy of the presentation, the archive link, and the transcript, I will type in my email address in the chat box. And uh, just feel free to send me an email. And uh, before we stop, are there any other questions? Okay, I think that wraps up. Um, when you exit the webinar, there will be a webinar evaluation uh, for you to complete. It would be greatly appreciated if you could take the time to complete the uh, evaluation. And that's it for the day. Have a great day, everybody. And uh, do you want to thank Marty, or Marty Swinney, and the participants for your participation. Thank you, everybody.